stay awake, here are some alum-owned coffee shops in the area that are open 24 hours. And guess what? Those coffee shops donated to our scholarship program after this. Like, that's the engagement. And then, of course, did the same thing again with a Hunger Games reference and just kind of kept in the pocket when people are like, why, why do I feel like I'm going to die now? And I'm like, just respect the mahogany and you'll be fine. It's a little Hunger Games reference for people who are like into that scene. And again, just spread with that particular content. If you're providing value for people, it will spread. Um, you know, here's another example. We'll post it pretty well on my band's page when we were raising money to go to Taiwan. I was like, this is not a good example of a short post, but it's an example of a post that has content that my audience cared about. And because it was a, all relevant, it could, even though it was long, it did pretty well. Like, if you, as long as you're providing value with each of your words and it's telling that a part of that bigger story, people will engage. So remember, just narrow in on that thing. Like, what are your goals? That should be the deciding factor of what you ought to post and where you should post it. Like, don't just um, spend your time, invest in it. Uh, you know, focus on those particular niche markets. And if you, you wanna know more about that niche market things, I put a link to the audio for, for yesterday's um, Session, musicbusinesshacks.com slash 358. CD Baby also has a video form so you can watch that. We won't dive into that uh, at the moment. But again, like, you know, when I, when I asked uh, Google, like, tell me about Asian American bands, and the number one result was my band, The Slants, like, that's a very niche kind of market. We started up um, in an era where there were no Asian American bands. There, were, there was not a single Asian American actor on television or a lead actor in films at the time. Like this in the mid 2000s, decades before Crazy Rich Asians and Fresh Off the Boat was killing it. Like we were an invisible community, but we were able to establish ourselves by focusing on these very micro markets. The Asian American community, anime conventions, nowadays we work with a lot of lawyers. Like those niche markets could be a big payoff if you can find a way to deliver relevant value to them. It also allows you to leverage relationships in a new, interesting kind of way. So if you could tap into niche markets, you can also find a way to create significant partnerships. This is a screen cap from uh, our partnership with G Sake, a sake brewery in, in, in Oregon. And not only did they like write really large checks to help support our tour, but we also collaborated with them in really interesting kinds of ways. Because I just kept asking them, how can we serve you better? How can we do better for you? Where's an area that you're struggling? And they would say, you know what, we don't, we don't sell really any sake in Texas. For some reason, Texas doesn't like sake. I'm like, why? We're playing South by. Let's build a tour where we play inside the biggest distributors of sake, give, give free tastings, we'll play music to draw people in, we'll talk about the product, and we'll film it and, and stream it. Guess what? They became the number one brand of sake in Texas. Distribution centers quadrupled their order. So the next time I went around and I was like, hey, I'm going on tour again. You want to invest? Absolutely. And I'm like, tell me the states where you're struggling. That's where I'll book my tour. Like, there are ways to give value so everybody wins. And that was a fantastic relationship with them. Like, we even said, like, well, how can you stand out on the shelves a bit more? And we realized that, you know, the sake bottle shelf looked pretty similar. You, people go to the store, does anyone seem like sake, like a, I don't know, Whole Foods or something like that. You just see a bunch of bottles and there's no explanation. Like, you're just like, uh, this one seems more milky than that one. This one has like a cherry blossom on it. Like, we thought, okay, how can we make this stand out? We talked the, the sake company to make bottleneck tags. Like, let's give out a free song. Everyone who buys this bottle of sake get our new unreleased song. We were on 55,000 bottles of sake across Whole Foods. And they sold so much sake that Costco was like, hey, do you really want to pick up your production? Let's bring it into our stores. Like, that is the kind of collaboration that can do that from thinking win win, from thinking niche market, because like no other band was tackling the sake market, and from delivering value. So let me ask you this particular question Is your business creative? Like, yes, you're in the business of creativity uh, and arts. But are you putting in the same amount of passion and creativity into the business side of things as you are into the art side of things? 
you approach your, like how you compose a song, and of course you use creativity, but are you doing the same thing for your social media? Are you thinking, what are some innovative, different ways that I can use this platform that isn't like anybody else? Yesterday I shared a story of how I kind of dominated a niche market using Yelp because our band loves to talk about food, and guess what? Nobody is using Yelp to promote their band. So I was like, I might as well do it. <laughs> Wrote reviews of like different restaurants across to the tours that I was on, and always kind of linking back, like, hey, check out my profile. If you like it, you can download a free song. And between that, uh, the first year and the second year, and a couple of other efforts, we led to over 45,000 downloads. <laughs> like. To be turned a lot of foodies into fans. And Yelp actually has community boards where you can say, like, I'm in this particular town, like, come on by to my show. And if you've been engaging and providing value to that community, they'll show up. They'll show up. Same thing with like how I got the world record for the most number of TED Talks. Like most people ask, how did you do that? There's no secret to this. I just went to TED.com, I clicked on events, and I basically pitched every single event in the world where I could speak the language or where there was a topic or idea that had that was relevant to that community. My first year, I sent over 300 messages to those events, and I got 299 rejections. But one said yes. And so what did, what did I do? I wrote 299 follow-up messages. Hey, this event in Seattle, Washington is gonna have me speak. Let me come to the event this year. My first year I got three TED Talks, the next year I got four, then I became a host. And now um, I just had like a video I did at, at a TED Talk in, in Washington, D.C. featured on TED.com. This is just from being persistent and, and saying like, how can I give your community value? If, if you do this, if you're persistent about it, like that's how you kind of essentially make it rain. For those of you who are in yesterday's session, I said, remember, gym, plants, and rain. Like no matter working out in a single day is gonna get you there. But if you show up at the gym every day, you start seeing results. Same thing with watering your plants. If you wanna make it rain, think, don't think of rain as a singular event. Think of it as billions and billions of tiny drops of waters, small efforts that lead up to one big swell, especially when it's focused. Remember this, that success in the music industry isn't something that you wait for or hope for. It's something that you create every single day. And when I approached my podcast and my book, Music Business Hacks, it was this, the same idea, that you could do more in 15 minutes of focused time every single day than if you could just squandering it on social media for hours at a time. Think about your goals, how you can serve those goals. And because if you're like, I don't have time to do this, yes you do, yes you do. If you, if you can get up 15 minutes or earlier, if you can take a 15 minute lunch break and, and focus on your goals, that's 91 hours a year of focused time period on your goals. If you're measuring it, you can see a lot better results. So, why don't we leave some time for like one or two questions because I know we're like just about out of time. Um, but yeah. How do we how do we get your books again? How do you get your books? Uh, you go to musicbusinessacts.com, there's a link to a book, or if you search for my name on Amazon or Barnes and Noble. Oh, oh, I also have a speaker's table up here, like yeah. two minutes. <laughs> so I'll be out there. <laughs> how did the, the Okay, so, uh, no, I mean, that, that's just a font type, and there, there's actually enough differentiation with their Google, uh, their G, the lowercase G, yeah. Yeah? I'm just wondering, like, does it really matter, like, the lobby focus So how do you narrow the focus? We'll focus on the things that you're most energetic about, most passionate about, where there's already some momentum, and how you can serve the smallest viable audience possible. Uh, I would say like check out the podcast. We like dove into that for like an hour yesterday. But like you really focus in on those areas, or in other words, what would I regret not doing 